At the beginning of this season, many predicted that Manchester United would be fighting for a top four spot, but the Red Devils seem to struggle right from the start. Let's take a closer look at the reasons behind their failures. The first reason is the suboptimal attacking lineup. Rasmus Hoyland got injured, Rashford played out of position, and his form was poor. Martial continues to warm the bench or be sidelined due to injuries, while Jadon Sancho's career is suffering due to his unprofessional behavior. As for Anthony and Greenwood, a true Brexit geezer. In simpler terms, Manchester United has a severely weakened attacking front, which is why we see players like Casemiro, Varane, Bruno Fernandes, and others scoring. The second reason is the struggle of new players to adapt. Most of them, except for Onana and Mount, didn't undergo preseason training with the team. Mount, initially an outsider, also suffered an injury, similar to Rasmus Hoyland. Sofian Amrabat and Regulon joined the team on the last day of the transfer window. These circumstances give the impression that Manchester United hardly made any transfer this summer, and due to player injuries, the team has become weaker compared to the previous season. The third reason is the team's poor physical condition. Due to numerous player injuries, Ten Hag had to experiment with the lineup, resulting in disappointing outcomes. However, there are questions for those responsible for the team's physical preparation, as well as the medical staff at United. In my opinion, they need to seek better specialists. The same goes for those in charge of defensive training, as one of the team's weakest points is defending during set pieces. So what needs to be done to to fix Manchester United. I will present short-term solutions first, followed by what United should do in the long term to steer their club out of turbulence. First of all, dear United fans, don't panic. At the moment, the team simply needs time. Injured players will return, gradually regain their form, and the team will start playing the way Ten Hag envisions. In my opinion, within about three, four matches, they will be able to show positive results. However, something needs to be done about the absence of Anthony and Sancho, considering the significant investment in them. For now, they will have to play with the available players, and in the winter transfer window, they should aim to acquire new wingers. On the left wing, I would recommend using Alejandro Garnacho more frequently, and as a backup, consider bringing in Lucas Ocampos on loan until the end of the season while also exploring talents in the academy who can provide rotation options. Additionally, Ten Hag should consider making changes to the style of play, as it currently closely resembles what Graham Potter did at Chelsea last year, where the primary goal was mere survival, which, as we know, didn't end well for Potter. That's a short-term solution, but in the long run, Man United's management should consider the following steps. They desperately need to offload unnecessary players. They should consider selling Harry Maguire, Victor Lindelof, Diogo Dalot, Jadon Sancho, Donny van de Beek, and Marcus Rashford. United could potentially earn £150 million from these sales, which they can reinvest in a higher quality squad. Additionally, let's assume the Glazers might provide an extra £50 million pounds. So, we would have 200 million pounds available for transfers, and here are the players I would target. For center backs, as a primary option, I would consider Max Kilman from Wolves or Ilya Zabarni from Bournemouth. However, my preferred choice would be Fikayo Tomori from AC Milan. Kilman, Zabarni, and Tomori are all young defenders with experience who can develop further under Ten Hag's leadership. They possess the mental stability and work ethic that Manchester United needs. If I had to choose, I would try to sign both Kilman and Tomori. If one is unavailable, Zabarni is a good alternative. For the right-back position, my top choice would be Nusser Mazraoui from Bayern Munich. He can significantly bolster Manchester United's defense while adding versatility and attacking options. As secondary options, unless Mazraoui declines, I would consider Amar Dedic from Red Bull Salzburg, who has impressed with the Bosnian national team, and Benjamin Henriks from RB Leipzig, who can bring experience and utility. In midfield, Kefren Turum from Nice could be an excellent addition potentially becoming one of the Premier League's best number eights. Although Nies may demand a substantial fee, a deal around 40 or 45 million pounds could benefit both clubs. Secondary options include Xaver Schlager from RB Leipzig and Steven Eustachio from Porto. For the right wing position, I believe two players are suitable, David Neres from Benfica and Viktor Siankov from Girona. Both possess the pace, passing ability, and ball control necessary for effective attacking buildup. However, it's uncertain whether the Brazilian would be willing to play under Ten Hag again. Up front, despite Rasmus Hoyland's presence, it's essential to have a quality backup in case of injuries and need of rotation. My preference would be Patrick Schick from Bayer Leverkusen as he combines height, speed, and aerial prowess, making him a game-changing substitute. A secondary option could be Kyogo Furuhashi from Celtic, who offers a different playing style, focusing on ball control, speed, passing, and finishing. Another option is Alexander Sorloth from Villarreal, known for his teamwork, aerial duels, and finishing ability. So if we consider our our main options and if all these
these deals go through, Manchester United will spend around £190 million to complete the squad. You might ask, what should we do with the left wing position? Give Garnacho a chance. But yeah, it would be cool to have Kaoru Mitoma on the team. However, I don't think the club is ready to spend another £100 million on a winger. Additionally, in the academy, they have Ethan Williams and Amir Ibrahimov, who will progress if you work with them correctly. However, besides strengthening the squad, Manchester United needs to hire higher quality fitness coaches. Given the current and previous injury concerns within the team, it's evident they need this desperately. The current level of injuries is staggering, and even last year there were too many, but this year has been even worse. Whom can they hire for this role? I would recommend Simon Martinello from Bayern Munich and Ismael Kamenfort Lopez from Bayer Leverkusen. Their contracts expire next year, so they can be acquired for free. Based on their track records, they are high-end specialists. Lastly, a crucial position to consider is the director of football. Currently, John Murto, who has previously worked at Everton, Fulham, and Coventry and joined the team with David Moyes, holds this position. He has been with the team to this day, but I honestly don't favor his work, and his track record doesn't inspire hope for improvements. Therefore, I would contemplate hiring someone better suited for this role. Currently, there's a highly competent specialist available on the market who has made a significant impact at Southampton, Tottenham, Red Bull teams, and Monaco. His name is Paul Mitchell. He would be a far better fit for this position than John Murto, given his prior experience and achievements. This is how I believe we can fix Manchester United. What do you think of my plan, proposed players and staff changes? Please share your thoughts in the comments. It would be interesting to hear your opinion. See you next time.